Hey folks, uh, Dave Parrish back here doing another video on NAC functionality. Um, if you could, if you enjoy these videos, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That's always helpful. But today's topic is working with uh, record histories. A couple things you can do here. Um, this can be very useful for troubleshooting or for just keeping a history of what's happened to a record for other uses. But let me jump into it. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, record history here. This is pretty straightforward. This won't be very long. Let me jump into it. <clears throat> this is fairly basic too, so it's not really an advanced video. NAC keeps a history of everything that's happened to a record. Uh, and to access that, first, you, you can't be on the starter plan. You have to be on the pro or above. So here's a, any of these tables, and here's a table or an object in different records. Here's how you access it. You click this little arrow thing. I'm going to pop this up. Then you click on record history. <clears throat> it needs to populate. And then here it is. Here's how it works. Um, you know, here's the first history. It was created. And it was action was performed by this there's a log it tells you various things and then <clears throat> I'll look at some other ones here the things in blue are what was changed on a particular date or whenever the action occurred um, this can be useful when you're troubleshooting something now note it doesn't keep a history of the deletion of it. If you delete a record, it's gone. And an aside here too, I believe if you're on the starter plan and you say, well, later, I need this record history stuff, uh, and then you change later, I don't think it keeps them for that time you weren't on the, on the pro plan. Uh, it will start then. But when you're troubleshooting stuff, and again, troubleshooting is a big topic, but it's going to give you time, when it occurred, um, source. You can click source. Like if you see something weird and or something wasn't happening when, when you thought it should or, or an action, you click on render. And it takes you to wherever that history changed. So you can see the form. You can go check out the rules or emails or whatever. Um, and another history too thing here too. If you, this is sort of an aside also. We have emails going out, and if you go to the form, you can uh, you can see a history of those emails. If it was delivered, if it failed, who it went to, all that sort of stuff. But back to the main point here. Um, let's go back. Get rid of this. Uh, so that's that's sort of it for that. You this can be helpful, uh, and to access it you have to drive down to each record. It won't give you a whole thing of it, but it can be very useful. One note: if you're running tasks, here's an example. Sometimes there's an issue in NAC of every day if you have a date field and you want to know today's date, or some sort of let's say time calculation. Uh, it doesn't consistently run. And a way around that is you can run a task that does something off to the side within the record, like just changes the value that you set to be changed. It's not really part of it. If it's doing that every day, you're going to collect a whole bunch of histories of that. So sometimes it's necessary or sometimes you want to limit, it's a good idea anyways, a tasks to have the criteria very specific so it's if it doesn't have to run every day it doesn't run every day okay that's what's up with um, with this record history now you can create your own too this is very useful it's a little different but 
I'm going to give you an example here. This is these are people or kids applying to a, a school and to get in certain programs. And so here's the application, the kid, all their information. And this school wants to know when things happen. So if they're talking to the parent, they can say, well, this happened on this date by this person. And picture a application. It's first created. Then the parent says, I'm done. They submit it. Then someone reviews it. It's approved. It's rejected. It's on wait list. I don't know. Whatever it is. So if there's an issue with the parent, here's a status history. So we know on this date and time, this person created it. This must be the parent. On this date, they submitted it. On this date and time, this person who's the user at the school verified it and then something happened and they went on a wait list. So they have a great history of that. Um, what you do, I'll go over here, to do that, um, here's the form where this department processor at the school is deciding what to do. We'll engage that form and you have a record rule. So every time they're updating the status, it inserts a connected record into a different object we have called status history. And it captures, okay, when it occurred, in this case it's the username, uh, it's probably a logged in account, it is the logged in account. Uh, so that means use a logged in account rather than a specific user role, because in this case a parent can do an action, like create it or submit it, and a different user role can approve it, deny it, or whatever. So it's it's better just to to use accounts instead of the specific ones. And what the status that we're capturing is whatever the application status is here, and we have we're capturing the parent of the children too. So that's really useful in a number of ways. And you can do um, you can do a bunch of stuff with that. That's pretty much all I have. Uh, history. The first one I showed you is really good for troubleshooting. And one thing with this type of history that I'm showing you now when we're capturing this log, it's going to capture specific things that you want to capture it. It doesn't really do what the other one does, have a date and show you what was changed. These aren't highlighted in blue. We can see this, but you can't really capture that there. So that's what I got. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, uh, like, subscribe, do all you can. Appreciate it, folks. Thanks.